G'day Internet, welcome back to another video, and yes, I have just gotten home from work. Uh, Well-dressed Jason has made a return. Now, uh, I received a package today. Uh, I already know what's in it, and by the time you're watching this, you would have read the title of the video, and you already know what's on in this, but let me explain. Why did I choose this? For a while now, I've been looking around at modern ZX Spectrum options, um, and there's quite a few out there. Obviously, at the very, very top of the heap, there is the uh, Spectrum Next, uh, which is permanently sold out, and on the very rare occasion, they do come up on the secondary market. Yeah, uh, they're nice, I just can't justify that much money. Uh, there is also, I think it's called the NGO? Uh, Retro Shack uh, has done some videos on it, I'll put a video up here. Um, and it looks fantastic, and I was this close? But then I started looking at some of the other options. Obviously we've got things like the Harlequin 128K. Um, it looks fantastic, but I know what I'm like. I would get all the bits and then I would never get time to actually build it. So that would have been kind of pointless to me. And the reason like this is that I think this was about, it was only like $140 uh, including shipping. Um, You'll pay more for that here in Australia for a untested original ZX Spectrum. Um, and it includes a whole bunch of extras that you would normally have to go buy, like a Div MMC and stuff like that. So, short version, that's why I settled on this, and that's why it's now time to get it out of the box. Here it is, uh, freshly delivered uh, from China this afternoon. Uh, it took, to give you a rough idea, I think it was about 23 days from it actually being shipped to it reaching me. It spent most of that time uh, sitting uh, in China waiting for a flight uh, out of there, uh, which was quite nerve-wracking to watch on the tracking. And here we go. We have a piece of foam. No. Uh, right. More foam. Okay. We've got an Australian plug adapter. Cool. We've got a fairly generic looking 9.5 volt, 2.5 amp, uh, amp switching power supply with the correct adapter already on it. Uh, and that's just a regular figure of eight cable, so I might actually just swap this and the adapter for a, a proper cable. We've got uh, the custom SCART cable, which has got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pin mini DIN uh, through to a SCART connector. We've got what well, looks like some rubber feet and some spare screws. That's a little odd, but okay. And the main prize, the ZX Omni. Now, I chose to get one in like a translucent smoke black. So, I have no idea what this is actually gonna look like. Ooh. That is nice. Okay, it's not really black black, it's actually come through as more of a grey, but I like the smoke look. Um, we've got classic rubber keys, uh, some buttons, I'll have to work out what they do. Mini din for uh, the SCART. I believe that HDMI connector doesn't actually do anything at the moment. Uh, what seems to be tape, uh, standard spectrum edge connector, uh, power and I assume power button. Uh, a couple of joystick ports. Uh, I think that's a reset button. I'd have to look it up. Um, SD card for the built-in Div MMC uh, and some dip switches for setting various options. Now, I believe sitting in my email is some instructions, which I'll go look at in a minute. But screw that, I'm just gonna go and plug this in and I wanna see what it does. Okay, it's, um, it's all plugged in. Do I hit this button? Oh. 
That's what this monitor does. Sinclair Research. Okay. And we're at the basic prompt. Well, I guess there's really only one thing to do at the moment. Why can I never find the inverted commas? Variable not found. Well, how did I manage to screw that up so badly? Print go to fart. Print farts. Go to 10. That's not exactly rocket science. Anyway, that's not really what I want to do. Ah, the yellow button brings up the MMC. Okay. I probably want a joystick for this. Okay. Jet Set Willy. Hey! It's the game I'm possibly the worst ever at. Sweet! I'm not going to play this. I'm terrible at it. So after that initial quick test, it has actually been a few days. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I got busy with work, uh, but I'm on holidays now. Um, and the second one is, is that I didn't want to just kind of shoot a video going, hey, look, it's a ZX Omni, wow. Um, and I wanted to actually dig a little deeper into this machine. And doing so, let's just say it led to some frustrations. Um, let me be clear, this machine is great uh, and it is quite capable, but it isn't or sunshine and rainbows. Um, for me at least that came down to two main reasons. One is just simply my not so great familiarity with speckies in general. I know a bit, I know enough to be dangerous and that's about it. Uh, and then also um, regarding the Omni itself which primarily comes back to just the complete lack of consistent documentation. Uh, everything seems to be reliant on the Facebook group and they're fantastic. Uh, and every question that I've asked, I've got an answer to, which is great. But if you've got something new like this, there is something to be said for RTFM. Uh, and whenever you bump into a problem or something you don't understand, you don't wanna have to ask a question or go, uh, trawling through the files collection in that Facebook group uh, and when, if you do need to answer, ask a question then you've got to sit and you've got to wait for an answer and it's kind of, you start to get frustrated because it's like, oh I've hit this roadblock, now I've got to wait for an answer. And like I said, the people in that group are more than willing to help uh, answer those questions, it just, it just gets a little frustrating. So I kind of want to start this again a little bit and I want to take another look uh, around the machine uh, again uh, and um, let's just say point out a couple of the things that I've found. So back to the Omni um, and I want to start on this side here. As I said in the beginning this guy here is a reset button uh, and it just works uh, but I had no idea what this button actually does. Uh, and after asking in the Facebook group, it turns out it is a turbo button, which gets the CPU running at seven megahertz. Now, I actually put that to the test and ran Noel's little basic benchmark, uh, and with it uh, out, uh, it, this does run the benchmark at, I think it's like a minute and 27 seconds, uh, which is exactly what other people have recorded on a standard specy. Um, and with it in, it does the benchmark at about 43 seconds. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely working. And I'll come back to this because it's actually kind of uh, helpful when it comes to playing games. Around to the back, um, as per before, we've got our RGB, I mentioned that. Uh, we've got our HDMI port, which uh, actually goes to nowhere. Uh, and because of that, um, because I was bored the other night, uh, I made a little cap for it. Uh, haven't actually tested the cassette ports. Um, I assume they work, that's fine. The expansion port on the back. Now, some people refer to this as the ZX bus uh, in my reading. Um, 
I just caught the expansion port on the back of a ZX Spectrum, but it's not 100% compatible. Uh, there is a bunch of signals that seem to be missing, one of them being uh, the video signals that normally come out through here. So if you thought of plugging this into, say, a ZX HD, uh, that isn't going to work. Um, and finally, uh, we've got power button and socket. Now, if you may remember when I unboxed it, it had this little adapter in there. Um, I don't actually know what this does, but I suspect it possibly reverses the polarity to uh, center negative. But it's absolutely not needed because there's a diode inside which enables you to basically plug any polarity in. Uh, and this thing just doesn't fit. Um, you, you can jam it in there, but then it like starts to open up the case uh, and stuff like that. And it's all just a bit rubbish. So uh, yeah, I'm not gonna be using that. And finally around to this side, we've obviously got our two SD card slots, a micro and a regular. Um, I've ended up just using the regular one because uh, my laptop has got a regular SD card reader in it and it was less screwing around. Uh, you can only use one at a time. Um, the dip switches, yeah. Uh, the settings for these seem to depend on uh, a lot of trial and error and which of the documentation you actually uh, read. Uh, the first three are for setting up, well sorry, the first two are turning on and off the DivMMC. The third one, which you can see, is up. Um, in a lot of the documentation, it's labeled as enable Kempston joystick. No, 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 no. It's disable uh, Kempston joystick. Um, and obviously I want it enabled, so therefore it is off. Uh, the next two seem to be about switching between a Unidos and XDOS. Um, I've just left them there, which I believe is what they were out of the factory and it seems to work. And the last three are for setting the particular ROM you want to boot in. So you've got 48K BASIC, 128K BASIC. Um, I think it can boot into Jupyter Ace. Um, there's a diagnostic ROM. I'm not sure why you would need that on this machine, but it's there. Um, but there's some caveats. So for instance, the uh, 2E, I think it's called the plus two ROM, the one with the little boot menu, it's there, but it doesn't work with the Div MM C. So that's a little confusing, especially, especially initially. Um, the NMI button, also known as, I call it the Div MMC button, uh, it works as you'd expect. The only thing I don't like is the fitting is uh, not great. You might be able to see that it's not quite centered uh, and tends to catch. Oop, see, there you go. Uh, and I suspect I will be taking a small file to the edge of the case there to give it a little bit more room so it doesn't uh, catch. And then the two joystick ports. Now this one here is for Kempston and this one here is what's called Sinclair. Now it's not Amstrad, uh, it's the Sinclair one which uh, simply emulates different key uh, keyboard scan codes. Um, so don't try and plug an Amstrad one in there. Um, and this is a regular Atari style Kempston. Now let me zoom in on this. Now, you may already be able to see that my Kempston one has some chunks missing out of it. Uh, and that's for two reasons. One, um, it seems that some joystick DE9 plugs on the end are a little chunkier than others. Uh, and this, these uh, outer shells just simply aren't designed for the bigger size. Uh, and secondly, whatever this plastic is, it has the consistency of cheese and it you only got to look at it wrong and it breaks. Um, so to kind of alleviate that to a degree, I 3D printed a little frame, uh, which goes on there. And A, gives it a bit more strength and B, uh, hopefully prevents it from cracking any more. So this is the inside of our ZX Omni and let me show you around. Uh, we've got a video encoder just here. This big guy is actually a clone of a genuine AY sound chip. Um, so it's kind of nice that we've got a real sound chip uh, and it's not just emulated or something along those lines. Uh, we've got a CPLD, we've got one, two, three SRAM chips and a, another CPLD. Uh, this here is our Z80 processor. Uh, we've got two ROMs. I'm assuming one of them is related to the Div MMC, and I'm guessing that's 
probably what uh, this CPLD here is all about given its location near the SD card. Uh, and then we've got some logic uh, up the top. These two big guys here are for batteries, which is primarily related to the laptop version of this. Um, although even in desktop mode, you can run it on batteries if you so desire. Uh, and this is the charging module for it up here. Down the bottom, we've got a couple of uh, RS-232 um, somethings, controllers. Uh, and this here is actually a Wi-Fi module. And you might think to yourself, ooh, awesome, Wi-Fi. I'd be able to put this thing online. Uh, yes and no. Uh, looking at the schematic, it's all wired into something. Um, and I found a bunch of stuff on the uh, Omni Facebook group uh, which points to some software that should work with this, and it doesn't. Uh, and then what I asked, what am I doing wrong? Uh, I got a single reply that basically says, oh yeah, um, the Wi-Fi doesn't seem to work on this issue for board. So that is quite disappointing. Now, that may start to feel like I've just gone and taken a massive dump on this machine, but please, don't take it that way. This is more of a case of here are the issues that I ran into. And if you're considering buying one of these machines, um, these are the things you should be aware of. Consider it some expectation management. So let's concentrate less for a moment on what it can't do and actually what it can do, which is actually quite impressive, especially for the money. What you essentially get is 128K spectrum, wedged into a little case, uh, rubber key case, uh, with a div MMC, uh, RGB, and your joystick ports, which from a value for money point of view is actually really, really good. I went back through my emails to actually go back and work out what I actually paid for it, uh, and it was $220 Australian, including shipping. Now, there is a long waiting period, and I expected that, and it's on the website saying that I think it actually quotes something like 60 days wait time, but I didn't wait quite that much. Mine was close to about six weeks. So to put that into perspective, I did some looking around. On eBay at the moment, here in Australia, um, a tested working 48K Spectrum is going for around the $250 to $300 mark, okay? Um, a Div MMC Future uh, from the future was 8-bit, I think is on sale at the moment for £70, uh, which is about $120 Australian. Uh, so you're looking at $350-$400 all told to put that back together. Now yes, it is original hardware and we all love original hardware, don't get me wrong, um, but you still only end up with a 48K Spectrum uh, with composite video after you've modded it. So for 220 uh, Australian delivered, this really does offer quite good bang for buck. Now, Mark from the Retro Channel uh, was kind enough to loan me his shiny new Retro Tink uh, 5X, and that's actually what it's running through here at the moment on this flat panel. Uh, and it also enables me to uh, capture some video off it because I tried to use my OSSC and my capture software just didn't like it. So what I want to do now is actually check out some of the games uh, that I've been enjoying uh, on this machine. Now, one of the things I have actually changed on this is the Div MMC menu. So if I hit the NMI button, uh, and this is an updated one that does things like long file name support, which I really like, uh, and also um, does kind of, you know, alphabetical folders then files instead of just, I don't know what the order was on the original one. I think it's oldest to newest file written or something like that. Um, this works for me a lot better. Um, and obviously there's a whole bunch of demos and stuff like that, and you can see some folders in here that of stuff like that's that Net, man, uh, net manager uh, program, which just didn't work. Um, and it just works like a div MMC. So um, I've created a 128 folder, uh, and here's some stuff I've been enjoying. Um, there's a great game I found called St. Dragon. 
So this is actually a nice little horizontal shooter. Um, I think it's, I mean, it's a good looking game. There's no doubt about it. It is made quite difficult um, by, um, because you're so big and you've got the long tail, uh, it makes for quite a large uh, hit box. And so it's very easy to get nailed very quickly, um, purely because you've got this long tail kind of following you around. But it's a good looking game, it's animated well, um, and I, it's a game that I think plays to the strengths of the Specky. Um, and yeah, I've actually found it quite enjoyable. Although I do die a lot. Now, another good port I found um, on this is the 128K version of uh, Renegade, which I believe is just Double Dragon. But there's a bit of a thing about this, and it's something that I find, and this might just be a me thing, uh, regarding a lot of uh, specy games. And that's that I find that the, um, the controls can be really laggy, and I find it especially bad in this, and it can be quite frustrating. I mean, and this is a pretty tough game to begin with. And if we go back to that turbo button that I mentioned before, and if I turn it on, I just find that everything, oh, okay, I walk straight into that, but I just find everything is just that little bit more snappy and can be controlled a little bit better, although I'm still getting my ass kicked. Oh, quit it. So I actually, as much as this is not a great example, I actually found that the turbo button actually really kind of helps this game. I need to get rid of that guy with, right, the guy with the baseball bats down. Another game that I have been enjoying is this modern Castlevania port. Um, again, it's a game that I find a little sluggish normally and a bit unresponsive, but with the turbo button pressed in, it just kind of snaps along a little better. So this is, this is it playing normally, um, and look, it works. Um, and as long as you kind of time your whip right, uh, it does work. I just find that with the turbo button on, which I've just hit, it just makes everything that little bit snappier, especially when it comes to the console, the control response. And all in all, I actually think this is a very impressive game, um, considering, you know, the hardware that it is running on. Um, it actually makes for quite an enjoyable experience. And I think it's one of those games that they've kind of, they've used the colour clash to, not necessarily to advantage, but they've managed to kind of work around it quite well. I'm guessing I meant to hit him, right. Hydra is another game that I've uh, recently just gotten into. Um, now, you will see on the screen that there's a couple of different versions of it. Um, and this is a game that doesn't seem to like loading from tap file. Uh, and then when I asked on, it was one of the other Spectrum groups, Spectrum for Everyone or something. Um, and they said, try the TRD file. And TRD is actually a file format that I'd never even heard of before, um, but this works great. Uh, and it's kind of like opened up this whole other option for games for me. This is kind of, well, it's, it's a basically, it's a racer uh, and you can shoot. Um, this is currently running in turbo mode, which uh, again, kind of makes things a little bit snappier. Um, you've got to collect fuel, you've got to shoot things. And I think you're meant to be on like some kind of boat, but, um, I don't know, it's also got a bit of an F-Zero feel to it. So 
So obviously there's some 128K games um, and that's kind of pushing this to its limit, I guess, because that's what the spec of this machine is. But obviously you can still play all the classic 48K games like, you know, Manic Miner and it's absolutely terrible intro, which sounds worse when it's on turbo. <laughs> um, now, this is a game that I know is a classic, right? I get it. I have never gotten past the front screen, so let's see how we go. I can usually get up to kind of this bit and I either always hit that plant, which I just did, or uh, I can't get past that dude who's up ahead. No, two, ah, oh, wait, go, go, go. Don't tell me I'm actually gonna do this. Oh, you can't hit those blue things. I was so close. So there you go, there is the ZX Omni. What do I think about it? In the end, as long as you know what you're getting yourself into and what can be frustrating and what works and what doesn't, if all you want is a nice, easy to use ZX Spectrum um, with kind of all the required bits kind of just built into it for a nice experience, this is perfect, right? You've got your built-in Div MMC, you've got RGB, you've got your joystick ports. Um, and from a dollar point of view, as I explained before, it's actually really, really good value. Look, yes, there are some issues and I've already gone through those. I'm frustrated that the Wi-Fi module doesn't work. Um, I do have some concerns about some of the fit and finish. Um, that I'll go back uh, and fix myself that, and that I've already started, like with the joystick uh, ports. But all in all, I do actually think this is a good unit. Just be aware that it's not perfect. And obviously it doesn't have like all the bells and whistles of a, a ZX Next, but it's also like a fraction of the price. So I hope you enjoyed this look at the ZX Omni. If you did, like, subscribe, all the usual youtube -y stuff. Uh, as always, a massive shout out to my patrons who are scrolling up the screen as I speak because without them, I wouldn't be able to check out awesome little devices like this. And if you'd like to help support the channel, there is a link in the description. But until then, I'll see you in the next one.